In the beginning, Hal Neal created modern radio. He discovered the playlist, the jingles, and the squad. This is the story of Rick Sklar, a combination of Horatio Alger, Sammy Glick, and the Peter Principle. climb to radio stardom began in the late 50s in tiny Patchogue, Long Island. After failing to land a job as a comedian, Rick convinced the owners of radio station WPAC to hire him to be a disc jockey. From the start, Rick's flair for contests became evident. Kid, I'm the general manager of WPAC. Uh, we've got this new contest here. It's the Wheel of Fortune. See, right here by the consoles, this wheel. Naturally, it's fixed a little so we don't get too many winners, only when we need to, like during A or B rating sweeps, if you know what I mean. Anyway, uh, what did you say your name was? Star? No, sir, that's Sklar. S-K-L-A-R, Sklar! Whatever, whatever. Now listen, every quarter hour on the air, you spin the Wheel of Fortune, and whatever prize the wheel lands on, that's what your listener wins. W-P-A-C. W-P-A-C with Rick Scalar. Wheel of Fortune time. Let's spin the wheel. Ouch! Damn it, I think I broke my hand. The hand of fate had struck. Rick knew it was time for a change. That evening, Sidel Sklar, Rick's wife, had the same thing in mind. Rick, look at us. Here we are still in Brooklyn. All my girlfriends have moved to Manhattan. Their husbands won't let them work, but here I am still teaching school. I should have listened to my mother. If you weren't a Scorpio, I would never have married you. Prodded by Sidel, Rick called a Manhattan-based radio station, WINS, and landed a job. Sedell, the break of my lifetime. Pack your bags, we're moving to Manhattan. Just think I finally made the big time. The big time? Well, Wins did have a big mailroom. They needed one to handle all those checks coming in from the record companies to the program director. In a matter of time, Rick knew what was going on and blackmailed his way to a more lucrative position doing production. Finally, Rick had an outlet for his humor. Listen now to an actual on-air promo which Rick wrote and produced for WINS. How does winds forecast the weather? This is the sound of a barometer. (whistles) Winds does not use a barometer. Then how does winds predict the weather? We flip a coin. Heads. Hailstones? Rick had finally found his place. The birth of a new person, a new image, was emerging in the ranks of broadcasting. Rick Sklar, Super Sklar. Modesty soon took a back seat to Sklardom. Here now, an on-air promo from WINS. Greetings, sports fans. This is Les Kiter outside the infield with a new chapter from our sore losers' almanac. April 11th, Garden City. Al Collins defeats Rick Sklar at Potsy. As Sklar chalked off the Potsy playing area on the sidewalk, Collins phoned the police. 
sore loser Sklar was arrested for defacing public property. But Al Collins is still free and easy each weekday morning from 6 to 10 on WINS. By now, rumors of payola in the radio business were making headlines. The program director suddenly took an extended vacation. Sklar latched onto the opportunity and moved his editing block into the office of the program director and took over to the general manager's amazement. The general manager wanted to know, who the hell's in the PD's office? Competition was tough in those days, but Rick always found a way to spotlight his station. This is Bill Edmonds here in New York City, and I have on the phone with me General Charles de Gaulle in France. General de Gaulle, I would like to have you make a statement for the American people, for our listening audience here in New York City and all of the territory that we cover about the crisis in France. Would you care to make a statement at this time? I, I certainly would, Mr. Edmonds. There is one thing that I want to make clear. When I assume power, if uh, Monsieur Flemlin permits me to assume power, I will not take it by any dictatorial means. I am too much of an old soldier. Uh, Monsieur, can you tell me who I am speaking to? Uh, my name is Bill Edmonds, and I'm one of the Minutemen here at WMGM. Oh, uh, MGM, the Motion Picture Company? Well, yes, well, we have a radio station here in New York City, a 50,000-watt station, and we cover oh. all of the metropolitan area and all over uh, the eastern part of the United States. Oh, I see. Well, of course, everybody knows that the best radio station in New York is WINS. Viva la France! <laughs> A few blocks up Central Park West, Hal Neal was plotting his strategy for WABC at 39 West 66th Street. When, say hello, this is Rick Sklar, program manager and part-time comedian. Sklar, this is Hal Neal. If you come to WABC, I'll put your name in lights. When do I start? Sklar brought with him his editing block and his Guinness Book of the World's Worst Humor and began writing promos for WABC. And now here's Mr. Question with the answers about WABC. Hello, and what is today's question? A sports fan writes, I missed the football scores Howard Cosell gave earlier today. Could you repeat them? Certainly. 14 to 7, 21 to 13, and 59 to 6. Al Neal was impressed by Sklar's ability. Soon, Sklar became program manager of WABC. But there was one roadblock to Sklar's success. Hi there, this is Don McNeil of the Breakfast Club, and we're bringing our whole gang to New York the week of December 7th through the 11th. Don McNeil and his Breakfast Club soon became radio history. Let's go, go, go. Sklar began to formulate lasting philosophies. Don't make waves. Ride on the crests of existing waves. Tie in with a winner and let them carry you. Headlines were everywhere. The Beatles, the Fabulous Four, the Super Group. Sklar saw an opportunity and capitalized on it. I'm John, I'm Paul, I'm George, I'm Ringo. We love WABC. We love you Beatles. Oh yes. The Beatles, first and exclusive on WABC. The Beatles, first and exclusive on WABC. First and exclusive, The Beatles on WABC. First and exclusive, The Beatles on WABC. You can win 10 box seat tickets to the Beatles Shea Stadium concert, plus the Beatles 6 album from WABC. <laughs> That's right, Kimo Sabe. To celebrate the Beatles' return to America, the WABC All-Americans will decorate the Beatles with a brand new American medal, the Order of the All-Americans. But everyone was doing Beatle contests. What could Rick do that was different? Something terrible has happened that I am quite ashamed of. I know Scott so is too. And, uh, well, somebody 
Somebody took a medallion, a St. Christopher medallion, right off Ringo's neck in the excitement, and I'm sure they didn't uh, mean to do this. No, well, here's Ringo. Here's Ringo. Ringo. The only thing, the medallion, you know, I haven't had it off my neck since I was 21. It's three years, and it's sort of a keepsake. Anyone who has the St. Christopher medallion that they tore off Ringo as he was coming in the hotel room, if you will come to our WABC suite with the medallion, we will see that you meet Ringo in person. Hi, this is Cousin Brucey, and we're sitting in our beautiful new WABC studio with a girl that's going to be quite famous by tomorrow morning. Her name is Angie McGowan of New York City. Angie, sweetheart, how did you get the medallion? I saw Ringo, and I wanted to kiss him more than any one of them. I tried to get my arms around his neck to kiss him, and I heard material rip, and when the whole thing was over, I had the medallion in my hand. Daddy, did I do all right? Holly, not now, not now. The strike bound sound of 77 W-A-B-C. Then, in 1967, AFTRA walked out on strike. Once again, Rick saw an opportunity to be discovered. Listen now to an actual air check of Rick Sklar doing the news. This is Rick Sklar with news briefs from WABC Radio. Beverly Hills, California, kidnappers have released unharmed the 11-year-old son of a financier in exchange for ransom, $250,000 ransom. Two police officers have been shot to death after responding to an alarm at a savings and loan association office in West Palm Beach, Florida. Subdued at the scene and taken into custody was a man who had attempted to kick down the door of the bank, shouting, I'm John the Baptist. Right now, it's 43 degrees in New York under cloudy skies. This is Rick Sklar reporting. Wally Schwartz, the general manager of WABC, decided Rick's talents were not behind the microphone. This hour, you will see these super pickets in front of WABC. Herb Oscar Anderson. Ron Lundy. You're in with... Ron Lundy. Dan Ingram. Morrow. Cousin Bruce Cousin Chuck Leonard. He's a go-go. Chuck Leonard. Charlie Greer. Wee! Charlie! Bob Wee! Lewis. Bob Lewis. Go, go, go. Plus dozens of other stars in continuous appearances. Remember, more of the pickets you want to see are in front of All American Radio. 77 Rick did have an ear for picking disc jockeys. WABC became an industry leader known for its great jocks and job security. We've got four minutes up at 12 o'clock noon on a Friday Foundation show. And this is WABC's Solid Gold Summer Spectacular in progress all summer long. And this is the 20th uh, anniversary of the bombing of Hiroshima, I understand. So in view of that... Cousin Brucey, and boy, I'll tell you, the crowd is really restless. And I got news, everybody down there on Park Avenue and listening to WABC, Paul and Ringo will be with us in a few minutes. Charlie Greer, gonna treat you right. 77 This portion of the Charlie Greer Show is brought to you by Pennis and Immense Clothier, Route 22, Union, New Jersey. W-A-B-C. Yeah, the Jeffrey Plain Harrison. At three and a half minutes after one o'clock, WABC chime time. You put more music power in your radio with WABC. Babalu on the go-go with you for a happy New Year's Day. 1968. There is something strange going on about Paul of the Beatles, in case you tuned in late and we're trying to figure it out. It's three and a half minutes past the hour of one o'clock. WABC, most music time. This is Robbie Young here in New York. 
Les Marshak here, and you know, we've been getting some phone calls. The uh, switchboard downstairs has been inundated regarding some speculating that uh, Roby Young was doing earlier this morning regarding Paul McCartney. Nine before five o'clock, music time at 77. Jim Nettleton for Dan Ingram on Saturday with some gold. Gary Puckett and the Union Gap. Why am I... 77 WABC. Never promised you a rose garden. It's Frank Kingston Smith, WABC, and a horse with no name, America. This is number two. Just bring money. Money talk. Nobody wants it. Of course they're open now. Huh? What do you think? Denison, some kind of a schmuck. Go, go, go. Before 11 o'clock with Kathy Busey, happy birthday to Merrill from Debbie and all the kids at the party in Jericho, New York. Sorry, I'm a little late with his kids. About, oh, about five minutes late. I'm Merrill and Debbie, we love you. By the way, Cousin the dedication address to write to Cousin Busey for dedications. Cousin Busey's dedication to ABC New York 23. Muffy, a Muffy getting Muffin knows the words. Ever done it? Is this the place? There's got to be the place because there's no other place. 28 degrees right now and clear, everybody. In about 10 minutes, it's Lucky Chucky time. And thank you so much for listening to Cousin Debbie from Eileen and Patty and Nancy and Tony and Carol and Joanne and Joni and all the girls of Girls Catholic High School, Roselle, New Jersey. We love you, sweetheart. And listen, we'll take you tomorrow. We'll have plenty more of the Top 167. Get your list. I remember January 13th for the Big Break concert. We'll see you there. Love you. With Rick didn't always get along with the general managers. Let's listen in on one of his last conversations with George Williams. Williams, you are a bigot, a fraud, a ripoff. I'll go to the papers. I'll run you out of town. I'll run you all the way back to Detroit. Detroit? <laughs> Do you really think you can swing it? Now, let's hear how he welcomed Al Racco to WABC. Hi, Rick. Come on in. These are charts and graphs of your radio station over the past several years. You have been constantly losing your audience to FM. What do you plan to do about it? Uh, do, do you mind if I uh, take my coat off first? The Sklar flair for contests and promotion has been part of the history of radio and WABC. Over the years... Here are some of the promotions you heard first on WABC. Exclusive on WABC. The Santa Selector. <laughs> WABC Radio now awards $77 for the most important airworthy news scoop phoned each week to WABC Action Central News. The Good Guys Silver Dollar Shooting Match. In the next minute, you could win up to 100 silver dollars. A luxurious mink stole from wonderful WABC. WABC invites you to give your boss the bird. On a postcard, write the birthday present that you want for our birthday. Anything you want up to $42 in value. Win the one prize you've always wanted. Win the most unusual prize ever given away on radio. WABC is giving away a complete bus company. Where's the thousand dollars, Batman? It's in the Batcave, Robin. Stand by. Someone has won a thousand dollar WABC jackpot. It's the WABC Secret Word Sweepstakes Winner Time. You're listening to the super hit sound of all American radio. The station the stars sing about in New York. Oh, now don't throw away that atrocious tie you got for Christmas. Send it to the WABC Tie Exchange. That's right, buddy, buddy. Ron Lundy's great society of undaunted undergraduate sleepless student stay-ups. Send the postcard to Agent 77, care of WABC, saying where you'll meet him. WABC Radio will fly you and your family to Florida to see the blast-off for the first man landing on the moon. To win this trip, write on a postcard the first sentence you think should be spoken by the first man as he sets foot on the moon. 
A twist to the wrist brings you upright to channel 77, the twist along town of New York town. This is the station that wished on New York and became a star. This week, WABC proudly presents these super hit sounds, the Beatles. I wanna hold a Bobby Rydell. Forget him. The Trash Man. I went everybody's heard about the bird. WABC has a truck a lot. It's an REA Express truck, painted gold, delivering thousands of dollars in free prizes to homes and apartments all over WABC land. Attention, all animals. Win money for your owners. Go, go with WABC for your fling at a fortune. Now, from WABC, it's the all Americans election. And listen to this. Winner will be driven by Rolls Royce to breakfast at the Waldorf Astoria with yours truly, Herb Oscar Anderson. Win big prizes from WABC by guessing how long it will take the St. Patrick's Day Parade to pass. Yes, WABC is giving away February 29th. You can win a day with Cousin Brucey sailing on WABC's 42-foot power cruiser. Just fold a piece of paper into a simple paper boat. WABC will sail all paper boats in the Lowe's Midtown Motor Inn swimming pool. Then, Ron Lundy, the face that sunk 10,000 ships, will jump in and make waves. All of the pictures in the finals of the What Does Roby Young Look Like contest will be on display. Seven of WABC's calls to listeners each weekday offer this prize, an honorary place on the WABC payroll. Seven other calls win you interest on a million dollars at the rate of 6% per year. Win a pair of tickets to WABC's 50th birthday celebration performance of Jesus Christ Superstar at the Mark Hellinger Theater by May or bringing a birthday card to WABC. Win four free tickets to Elvis Sunday at the Garden. Win a pair of free tickets to the concert for Bangladesh movie. The $25,000 button. WABC is opening the door for you to see Paul McCartney and Wings in concert. Getting out of the cold and flying American Airlines is... Today's Sunday News has more WABC big tickets. WABC. That's all you need to know to win. W-A-B-C. But perhaps the most famous are the Mona Lisa contest. Mona Lisa, Mona Lisa, men have named you. Now, to celebrate the New York showing of the Mona Lisa, world's most famous painting, WABC is giving cash awards to listeners who draw or paint a copy of the Mona Lisa. $100 for the most artistic Mona Lisa. $100 for the funniest Mona Lisa. $100 for the biggest Mona Lisa. And $100 for the smallest Mona Lisa. Judge's decision final. Duplicate prizes in case of time. All entries become property of WABC. Draw or paint your Mona Lisa on a postcard, paper, canvas, anything you want. And mail it before midnight, February 20th to... Mona Lisa. WABC. New York 23. Smile when you say that. Mona Lisa. And the Principal of the Year contest. It's the third annual WABC Principal of the Year election. Can you elect your principal, the WABC Principal of the Year? To vote for your principal this year, sign your name on 3 by 5 file cards and bring them to WABC. That contest depleted the entire year's promotion budget of $3.74. But the station wasn't the only thing that Rick was promoting. Rick, Scott just called. His bike just gave out. He wants to borrow the Volvo. Oh, God. This is ridiculous. I've got to get more money. <coughs> Rick, when did you start smoking cigars? I thought the beer was the only one who smoked cigars. Young lady, don't you realize that smoking will get you higher? <laughs> Shortly after Sklar realized how to get up the corporation, the corporation upped Sklar. In fact, Sklar became so famous, his name is even heard on other New York radio stations. The 
your season for Rich Sklar of Manhattan is 938 22 10. 6-6 WNBC, the big 66 total request. Circle 6, 12, 12. Gee, thanks, Don. Here's the $20. And now, here is the star of Rick's one venture into television. Saturday Night Live. I'll never forget Rick Sklar's adventure in television prime time. When my show Saturday Night Live started, I had been assured by Sklar that he could produce every major recording star in the nation. The documented record shows he couldn't produce a single one. He arranged a meeting for me with one of the Beatles, John Lennon. After that one meeting, because of Sklar's misadventures, I could never even reach John Lennon again. Nothing unusual about a succession of failures in that regard, though. Because of my personal knowledge from the very beginning of his career with ABC Radio, and in particular the flagship station, WABC, I have always held to the notion that he is a consummate fraud. He gives the appearance of naivete, as artless, perhaps, as a William Blake poem. In effect, though, and in fact, he is a schemer, a conniver, pretending to knowledge that he doesn't remotely have. As for honesty and integrity, I find it unbelievable that we have never been exposed in a major records scandal. No matter... Such is the nature of things with the American Broadcasting Company that mediocrity and failure have only one result. That is promotion. So Rick Sklar now goes on to be a vice president at ABC Radio. And this probably is but the beginning of the demise of the entire ABC radio structure. Hal Neal has made many mistakes, but this one is unsurpassing. Rick Sklar, the story of the Sklar who wished upon a station and became a star in his own mind. The man who helped make ABC Radio an annuity. The best music, WABC. Rick Sklar. When you watch Hal Neal. Put together a deal. You can bet that the winner is ABC. We once had a network. It's turned into four. With only 12 stations top cum in the nation, he's adding two more. With his winning team, he could bail out a beam, making millions in profits his specialty. Call it dumb. Call it funny. The man's turning air into money. You can bet that the winner is. You can bet that the winner is. You can bet that the winner is ABC. Rick Sklar, author, firefighter, Catholic professor, cab driver, and known hypochondriac. This has been your story. The story titled, The Station is the Scar. <laughs> Howard Cosell played himself. Lynn Latkowitz played herself with resignation. As usual, Pat Pantanini played Al Racco. Holly Sklar was played by Linda Milan. Bob Hart played Hal Neal, Reverend. Les Kiter was Les Kiter, unfortunately. Bob Dayton, Herb Oscar Anderson, Scott Muni, Charlie Greer, Babalu, Roby Young, Les Marshak, Jim Nettleton, Frank Kingston Smith, Jay Reynolds, and cousin Bruce Morrow all played themselves and lost. W -A -B